Adobe Audition CC has some really incredible, powerful tools for not only modifying, editing, remixing, noise reducing, and processing your audio, but also allowing you to take things like mono or stereo files and effectively perform what's known as a reversion to basically convert mono or stereo into a 5.1 listening environment. So essentially, what you can do is you can take something that was recorded, which was never initially intended to be in 5.1, and split it apart and create a multi-channel experience. Now, I'm going to show you the basic technique for doing this using a, an effect that we have in here, or a process called the frequency band splitter. Now, for those of you who have been with Audition for many years, uh, you might remember that this was actually something that we had long, long ago. Well, I'm very happy to say that it's now back in Adobe Audition CC. It's even better. It's even more visually appealing. And it just allows you to do some really cool things. And it also leverages a filter that you may remember called the center channel extractor. So let's get started. So what I have here is an audio audio file. Uh, this happens to be stereo. This is one of my recordings from uh, my soon-to-be-released children's music show entitled Just Play Music, available now on iTunes. And what I want to do is effectively take this stereo media and convert this into some kind of a 5.1 mix. Now again, I'm not expecting to separate guitars and violins and individual voices. I just want to take this stereo thing and split it apart and then control things like sub-frequency, the center channel information, and create a little bit more depth so that, so that if I'm watching it in 5.1, it's generally a bigger, wider, better experience. So the first thing I'm going to do is try and separate or isolate the center channel information. And for that, I'm going to use the center channel extractor. So if I come up to my effects menu here, and I go into stereo imagery, you'll see that we have the center channel extractor here. Now, before I enable this, and this is in its default settings, we haven't changed anything just yet, let me go ahead and play for you the original the original mix as it is right now without any extraction going on. Okay, so you can hear what that sounds like. So now by turning this on, I'm going to play this back. And again, actually, I'll kick it in halfway there when I start singing. And you're going to hear that it's basically going to isolate the center channel. This is the default setting. And you'll see if we go to our presets here, we've got things like acapella, amplify vocals, lift vocals, or vocal removal. Now, this is a whole other demonstration. This is a whole other video that I'll do for you later on. Right now, I'm going to use the default. Maybe we'll switch this to acapella. But take a listen to what this is doing. <laughs> and when at last you find you're feeling all right, such a good feeling, the way you want to lose it. Yeah. Strum a few strings, play a couple of keys, grab a coffee can. Now what you can see is that effectively, it's basically isolating most of what's in the center. Now when I recorded this, I actually sang it live with piano. So the piano's in the center, you're going to hear the piano. What's happening is, by using these frequency ranges, you'll see that I can set the cutoff points so that it basically filters out all of the bass. It's currently filtering out everything above around 10K on top of focusing on everything that's in the center channel. You even have separate sliders here to set your side channel levels and again, increase your center channel level. Now, if we go to something like the acapella, let's take a listen to this one. Okay, so the point of doing this is that basically I'm going to take this center channel and allow me to really control what's displayed in the center channel listening environment. Now we're going to have other variations of this to work with, you'll see in just a moment. Very quickly though, I can say apply. It's going to create this center channel version here. I'm just going to drop the amplitude. I'm going to copy this to a new file. Then we'll go back to original here, and I'm going to undo these changes because we want our original stereo music intact. So now we have the center channel by itself. And this is just going to give us a little more flexibility when we start moving things around in 5.1 space. So let me go ahead and save this, and we'll call this Jace Center Only, and click OK. And inside my multi-track here, you'll see that I've created a track called Center Vocal. I'm going ahead and drop that one right in there. Now, if it's time to start moving things around, when we have all of our tracks, you'll see that we've got our multi-channel panner here. And I can say, you know what? I don't want this in the front left and right. I want this discreetly in the center. I can, again, make my center level 100%. I can actually 
uh, enable or disable these accordingly. But again, we can start playing around with that in just a moment. So let's go back to the master edit here. And now we're going to go into edit frequency band splitter. And this is really where the magic happens, because now what you'll see is that we have the ability, we have up to eight different bands that we can select, and I can literally cut this file into independent frequency bands. Now, if you go into the presets here, you'll see that we have a couple of different ones. The one that I want to focus on today is five band broadcast. And you'll see that down below, you can actually set your, minim your cutoffs for each of these individual files that it's going to create. So, in terms of a 5.1 mix where we're dealing with things like LFE, I want basically all of my sub information, which is typically 40 hertz and below, to be its own discrete file. And then I want some of that low frequency, 40 to 120 hertz, to be its own file. That's where you find a lot of things like, you know, bass guitar and sort of fundamentals of snare drums are usually around 120 or 150 hertz. Again, these are all adjustable. Then we can go into our low mids, high mids, et cetera, et cetera. Again, you got up to eight bands that you can select here. We're going to use five. You can see visually it's kind of showing you what's happening here. Again, if you want to adjust these, you can drag them simply by dragging like this, or you can drag the actual graphic. Click OK. And when you do that, very quickly you will see, if we look inside of our files panel here, that now we have all of these discrete files represented by these discrete frequency ranges. So if we go ahead and select 0 to 40, well, you can't really hear it, right? This is sub-frequency information. But if you look at the frequency analysis graph, you can see that 40 hertz and below, this is your sub-info. So what we've now done is we've created a sub-track, an LFE track that we can send discreetly to the LFE. So all of that nice, pumping, thumpy bass is only going there, and it's no longer going to those front speakers or the rear speakers or the center channel. Similarly, if we go to our 40 to 120, Again, you're starting to hear a little bit more, but the idea now is that, once again, we have discrete control over this. Here's 120 to 3200. Again, most of our sort of vocal fundamentals are going to be in that range. Here's 3200 to 7500 hertz. Okay, and this is where we can start to think about where do we want to place these frequencies in 5.1 space, maybe add something like reverb or a little bit of ambience just to give it a wider picture, a wider, uh, a wider range to really open up this originally stereo file in 5.1 space. And then the last range here is our 7.5K to 22K. And what I like to do with this is this is the kind of stuff that I like to place in the rear speakers in your surround channels. And then you just add a little bit of a reverb that echoes towards the front. And this is going to give you a very nice sort of wide open experience. And again, you're going to feel that high frequency in the back of your head. It's just going to be really cool, really dynamic, and again, really open this file up. So now that we have all these individual files, what I can start to do is drag them into their associated track. So I've got my sub track here. I've got my left surround. Now, again, we can choose where these things go. I named these like this. In fact, I don't know why I even use these names. Let's just go ahead and drag these files in. I'm going to rename them in just a second. So here's our 120 to 3200. Here's our 3200 to 7.5K. And here's 7.5K to uh, 22K. And uh, am I missing one? Zero, 120. There we go. Okay, there's everything that we need. All right. So at this point now, we'll keep that as sub. We'll call this low. Freak, mids, we'll call this mids, and we'll call this highs. Again, not sure why I named those like I did. Doesn't matter. We're going to keep on moving. So at this point now, if I go into my mixer, I can go into something like my sub channel. I can go ahead and double click this. And again, I'm going to click on LFE only. And if I'm looking at my multi channel meters down below, if I go ahead and play this back, let's go ahead and solo this track, wind this ahead. What you should actually be able to see now, and we can increase the LFE level here, is that all of that bass frequency is now going discreetly to the LFE channel. Okay, so now what I can do is obviously with our center channel voice, I want to place that discreetly in the center channel. So what you can see that I've done here inside the track panner is I've disabled my left and right. I have it focusing solely on the center. Nothing's going to the LFE. And once again, if I play this back, if you look at your meters down below, you can see that that voice track 
the, our discreetly made voice track is going solely to the center channel. And if we want to start and widen this and broaden it out and bring it to some of the other channels, we can do that too. But don't forget, you've also got vocals in some of those other tracks as well, like the front left and front right that we have here. So again, you can start to pan these around and do some very interesting things with these tracks, but ultimately, reversion mono or stereo to create a very interesting 5.1 mix. And taking that a step further, when you start adding things like effects, if we just go ahead and go into our effects channel, here. Don't forget that we have our multi-channel surround reverb, which gives you an enormous amount of control. You've got lots of presets here available to you to really customize and modify your sound and do some very interesting things with your audio, whether you're delivering this to Blu-ray or DVD or on-air broadcast production. Uh -huh.